Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. I'm Dan. I'm Dominica. And I'm Josh. And since Jesse is still not doing 100% in lieu, uh, uh, filling in for Jesse is uh, a bottle of wine as a placeholder because we want to make the panel look attractive. Jesse loves wine. Today we're going to be discussing a manga that Dominica selected, The Case Study of Vanitas by Jun Mochizuki. Dominica, you have a discussion starter or something to kick this off? Well, since you guys read a little bit more than was expected of you. Okay, let's talk about the way that we interpreted <laughs> volume one. Initially, when you go onto the site, there are 57 chapters. They don't men make mention to what uh, volumes are. And when when I read it, it told me that Volume 1 concluded with Chapter 10. But it turns out that Volume 1 concludes with Chapter 4. And I was just told to read it, so I read like 50 of them. <laughs> so Dan read 50. I, so we're going to call this The Case Study of Vanitas, Volume 1. Alright, so the question that I had pertained more to both of you guys not having the knowledge that you have of Vanitas now. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it was... What do you guys think of Vanitas himself in pertains to his reliability or trustworthiness as a companion of Noah and his sense of self? Vanitas is inconsistent with the way that he identifies, be it a vampire or a human, so I question his trust right there. Because yeah, I, th I think, like, in the first one, he, he says, like, he's a human, I believe. Yes, he is human. And, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the thing is then, like, yeah. but he seems to, like, at some point, identify as a vampire as well, which I feel the thing is that maybe he has, like, a split personality disorder, maybe, or something like that, where he, like, identifies as two different things. I, I don't really know. I wouldn't know. say that much. I yeah, think but, he's uh, more, I think he's more cunning. Than yeah, so I think, I think, feel like, the thing is that maybe he uses that as, like, you know, to gain trust to a certain group, because, like, mm -hmm. you know, if you go to a group of vampires, you would say, you're a vampire, so that way it, it won't suspect you. All right, but when you're around humans, you'd say you're a human, you know, because mm -hmm. the humans are afraid of vampires, at least in this world they are. I well, think with Vanitas, I think that, I think him writing this book is the equivalent to Dr. Phil writing a book, whereas <laughs> Vanitas is a, is a human trying to come off as a vampire. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Phil is, I don't know, whatever the heck he is, trying to come off as a doctor. The only <laughs> difference is uh, Vanitas is doing this knowingly. I think Dr. Phil is, I think he's still trying to figure out whether or not he's a doctor. Yeah. Well, Vanitas did not write the book. It was given to him. Um, along with, Yes, along with the yeah. namesake. He is human. The book belonged to the Vampire of the Blue Moon. Vampire of the Blue Moon. Yes. Mm -hmm. who, he gave him the book, and he himself is determining how to use the book for his own, I guess you could say, gain? Because it is supposed to be used to harm, but he is using it to heal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's basically the, curing vampires. He, like is, cur for he is curing them. Mm -hmm. He is. Um, most people think that the book is what makes curse bearers, so they're afraid of him, so he won't tell them, you know, this is what the book is used for. He'll just, and he won't even say his name, he'll just, you know, open it up and then begin to use it, and then he will heal them. So everyone's afraid of the book and of him, but the Part of Vanitas himself that really interested me in the beginning was his motivation mm. behind why would he insist that he is doing such a good thing for everybody but not give them a choice about it. I'm doing, I'm going to save all of you and I don't care what you say about it. You know, that's a bit Luciferian in a mm -hmm. way where it's taking away that uh, free will option. Yes. And I think you see that in, in different aspects of society, but we're not going to go too in-depth with right. that. I think that maybe he's just, like, so focused on what he wants to do, the things that he's going to do it no matter what anyone says. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like, you know, that's what kind of makes him an interesting character. He's like, I'm doing this because the thing is, I feel it's right. I don't care what anyone else says or if they don't want me to do it. And I admire that from a character. As long as you're not forcing it upon other people oh, yeah. and forcing them like to... Like, he's a lovable jerk, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would say so. I yeah. think being cunning and manipulative can make you a bit of a jerk. 
Yes. And then a little bit later, you didn't quite get as far as Dan. I did not read as much as Dan, but I have seen <laughs> more of the anime. Um, you do see another side of him that kind of explains why he is the way that he is. Oh, yeah. And the same with Noah, why he went with Vanitas in the beginning of the first place, why he was so desperate to help Amelia when she mm. was discovered as a curse bearer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With Louis and everything that happened yeah. in the past with him. I think that that is being able to help people out of uh, a terrible circumstance, as long as they want to be helped out of that circumstance, is uh, a, a nice deed. Uh, yeah. or a good motive. The character that I liked in here is uh, Noah. Noah. <laughs> because uh, I wouldn't want to say relatable because everybody has a different train of thought. I think he's, he's very simple. He's very... I wouldn't say... I think he's... he. What you see is what you get from him. He's perfectly, as ironic as it is, he's perfectly human, even though he's a vampire. I do find him kind of funny, too. And like, yeah, he, he, I he, like like, how... It's like, they, they tell him, like, put the girl down, he's like, no. <laughs> yeah, and I like how he resists things that may... Tough choices to him come off. He can feel that these are tough choices for him. Yeah. I like the difference between Vanitas and Noah in their approach to how they solve problems. Mm -hmm. Noah is more the type where he likes to sit down and talk about it, and Vanitas will just kind of go straight in and say what he wants to say and do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. It was um, like just straight to the point. One's like, mm -hmm. let's think about how we're going to get to that point. And I do also like how whenever they have to travel somewhere, Noah has no problem just picking Vanitas up and carrying him on his <laughs> arm as he runs across the Paris rooftops and Vanitas doesn't care and he doesn't he'll just get thrown. Like, oh you need that person you want to like, stop him? Okay. And I'm gonna throw you to do it. That's a very the the, the visuals are very beautiful. They are. She's a very yes. amazing mangaka. I, lo I love the steampunk aesthetic to it. Yes. I know that there's that one image at the very beginning. Uh, it reminds me of the invention of uh, Dr. Hugo and that whole idea of being in that Paris setting right. and the advanced, for them, advanced technology, even though this setting is a little bit, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure the setting from I know, our I don't time. really have airships. I think it's in the 1800s. Okay. Yeah, then it is pretty in yeah, line like 19th with... 19th century, mm -hmm. which is like what steampunk usually right. takes place in. Pretty uh, in line with uh, invention of Doctor Hugo, and the, uh, because it, it aligned with the uh, the film of Voyage uh, Voyage to the Moon, which is from 1902. I thought the the character of uh, Dominique. Uh, we're getting a little bit beyond this particular <laughs> book. I thought Dominique was a very likable character once you uh, got to know her more because of her sense of uh, empathy, the way that she interacted with uh, Noé. I yeah. do. I, I agree. I do like her as a character. I feel more bad for her than anything else because of her mm. unrequited feelings mm. for Noah. He shows really not that much romantic interest in her, despite how much he loves her as a friend. Mm -hmm. He. I feel like Noah is going through too much with the loss of Louis, who is Dominique's um, twin brother or just brother. I don't twin know. Brother. Twin. Okay. Wow. Thank you guys. I feel like he's going through a lot. And that complicates his relationship, I suppose you could say, with her. Yeah. I mean, they're twins, so when Noah looks at her, I'm sure he sees Louis. Uh, I mean, well, the thing is, like, uh, mm -hmm. they're probably fraternal twins because, you know, it's, it's Yeah, they have to be, because yeah. identical has well, to be I know, subject. I mean, that, that would be very weird if they were identical. <laughs> yeah. The other thing to keep in mind is that Noah, when he first met them when they were children, they were all in the same age, yeah. and he didn't have that romantic impression. The way that he saw things, they grew up with one another. They started their little, like, the little clubhouse with mm -hmm. the people, and, the, and then Louis was uh, corrupted to the point that he was exposed to the blue moon. It made him rabid, and... He became a curse bearer. Yeah, he became yeah. a curse bearer, went after everybody and at that point the only way for them he knew the only way to contain him was to kill him mm -hmm. and, and he wanted no one to do it yeah he sees it as that i think that if you're in his circumstance there's a good chance that that's how you're gonna see it too mm -hmm. yeah what are you guys' thoughts on jean -Nic? i don't want to say too much so i'm trying to think of like... we've already spoiled it <laughs> <laughs> to me initially didn't really stick out in the way she was a bit 
one-dimensional and seemed to be that... Uh, yeah, in, 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 really... the, in volume one, I do feel the thing is that she is kind of one-dimensional. She doesn't really yeah. stick out to See, and I felt the exact opposite because of her stoicness and her ability to listen to her Master Luca and then how it switched immediately once Vanitas kissed her. It hmm. was like a completely different person. You know, she lost all of her strength, her gauntlet fell off, and she was just unable to fight or defend herself. And I felt like that was really curious for somebody who started to come off as an antagonist. You know, and, and later we find out but she's I think, not much one. But that was one. from Vanitas's influence. Yeah. Because you can't think that his kiss has to mean something. Yeah. You would think that, but then my question becomes, why is that always his reaction is to do that to somebody or with somebody and does that not count as manipulation when we know that his feelings are not true because they just met like his mm. his manipulation questions for me what what is his motive and, and then there's the question of what does he really know and what does he want out of yeah. it all because we we know not so much from this particular volume but what the weight of drinking somebody else's blood mm -hmm. um, as a vampire what it does to the person's blood is getting sucked. I'm sure that you've seen yeah. what happened. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, sure how far chapter 10 gets to, but the way that the body reacts is depending on your relationship with the mm. person who is biting you, and it can go from like giving you anger to giving yourself an orgasm. It can mm. go yeah. in any which yeah. way, depending on what that person means to you. Chapter 10 concludes with the uh, Louis and Noah. I think Noah <laughs> is about ready to... Uh, make a decision on Louis because it's it's been the standoff between the two it's a <laughs> but and then it, and then what i really see is the end is uh they have this vanitas q a how old are you and what are my birthdays doing up there it's hard to believe that they'd be unless vampires are different i know with vanitas it would be because he's a human he would take on a human age but no way i'm not sure how that actually works in this universe mm. vampires because I think like in traditional vampires, like vampires, they remain the age that they returned. So the thing is that their age is just really just a number. They don't actually age. But uh, mm -hmm. Noah has been a vampire since the day he was born, and he's an yeah. archbeast. So he's a very special kind of vampire. Um, oh yeah, I, I mean that. But I'm saying like in traditional vampires, like mm -hmm. lore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this end comic is asking uh, Noah is asking Vanitas why he calls Dante Baldi. So mm -hmm. yeah, each volume and some chapters has have, have little chapter things at the end of them, little comics. Because those were yeah. released as single chapters, mm -hmm. and so they're appealing to... In Joker magazine. ...different kind of audience. Mm -hmm. That was cool. I know that you're interested in either continuing or watching the anime now, and I'm not so sure if you are. Um, I'm really... I'm in contemplation about that as well, mm -hmm. because watching the anime, probably not. It has to be really... It really needs to stick out yeah. in some way in order for me to watch it, and I don't think this meets that caliber for me. Um, you can always keep going a little bit and see how you feel mm. about it once the story gets a little bit going. Oh, it gets pretty good. Mm -hmm. it does, yeah, I, I, um, I get spoiled a lot because that's what kind of keeps me going, but my mm -hmm. best friend, who has read this since it came out years ago, has been begging me, please read it, please read it. I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. To all the way to the point that when the when the anime came out I still was kind of like eh. and she said can we watch it can we watch it together so I said okay and I was really 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 confused because there's a lot of terms you know there's a lot of French words and I was just very very confused but I did like it enough to keep going no um, way John A <laughs> Varitas the Voodoo and the Chosse all these French words and I was very overwhelmed but I liked it enough to keep going and I'm really glad that I did. Noah always captured me from the beginning. He was my favorite character. Once they went to the ball, that was when I started to like Ronnie Toss a little bit more. I felt like I was starting to get a handle on more, like him as a character. You know, later on when you learn about his past, the abuse and the experiments and everything else that he underwent and the loss of his brother, you start to understand his motivations and you kind of see him in a different light. So I'm, I'm excited to get to keep going. And I do recommend it. The drawing style is completely out of this world. It's she very nice she also yes. wrote um, the manga Pandora Hearts. I never read that one, but it is also a, um, a very popular one. My best friend loves that as well. I've just I've never read like a manga where every panel seems like it's like a work of art. Like there's mm -hmm. there's not like a a scene on it where I'm like, oh, that wasn't drawn very nice. Like I I like every single panel. The fight scenes are actually really done yeah, very well. Which uh, I actually ended up looking up something about that. Is that things that 
she wanted to like make the the fight scenes seem you know, epic and stuff like that. So that thing that's why they're drawn really well. I was very impressed with it. My only issue that I have with it is Vanitas's relationship, or sh so you can say that with Jeanette. I want to know what is his ultimate goal with her and I feel like once that's kind of covered then like the rest of my questions will kind of be answered mm. because that's what's sticking out to me the most is why is he doing this you know what's going to come of it because mm. I know that he he can't have fallen in love with her that quickly and I want to know like does mm -hmm. this make him a bad person for doing this to her or does it make him intelligent for finding a new way to get what he wants like I don't know yet I don't know, and I, I want wherever he and Noah end up to be of a happy place because of the warning that Noah gives you in the beginning of the book. That I will kill Vanitas with my two hands, you know, in the end of his memoir, which is what this is. Yeah. yeah. Um, that I, I've, I told my friend that I'm hoping that it is just a play on words. And that nowhere killing Vanitas really just means that he gets rid of the book of Vanitas altogether mm. and that there is no more Vanitas and he can be himself. Because mm. his name isn't even Vanitas. Mm. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm hoping it really means. Or it could be referring to the real Vanitas. It could be that mm. too. Which but I don't think it's ever really mentioned whether Vani the real Vanitas is alive or not. Mm. Or at least what you guys have read. Well, I mean, I've, mm. I've seen the majority of it. You read more. I can't find certain volumes. They're impossible to mm. find. Mm. Um, but that's that's what I'm looking forward to the most is seeing how it ends because mm. Pandora Hearts ends in tragedy. So I don't want mm. this to be tragedy. And hope, <laughs> hopefully discussions like this bring attention to re-releasing or putting out the uh, volumes that yeah. mm -hmm. are more and more impossible to find. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I was it like uh, there's there's a manga I was reading. Uh, I know it's a bit off topic, but uh, there's a manga I was reading where the thing is like the eighth volume was never released in Amer America. So I read the first seven volumes in English, but I can't the, the eighth volume is only in Japanese. I can't read it. No, they're out there. They're just impossible to find because everybody keeps buying them off the shelves. Yeah. You know, I go to Barnes and Noble and they only have volume eight, and mm. that's it. And then you know they have volumes maybe one or two. But mm. I need. You, I think you have to go beyond the brick and mortar Barnes and Noble. I've tried. Yeah. I think like, that's, 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 that's where right. online really helps with yeah. like, especially manga and stuff like that. Yeah. Like I, mm -hmm. I have very few physical like mangas, and the majority of mangas I read have always been mm -hmm. online. I think it's a bit easier. I mean, for me, uh, because online it's up to down. Yeah. Sometimes you still have to go right to left, but. I mean, there's there's some where you can yes. change it and go like this. With the manga, it starts on the on the right on the right, and, and you, you work read where you're this left. way. Yeah. And you read down. Yeah, like mm -hmm. open the book from like the first page. For those of you who don't know how to read a manga, here's manga one on one. It looks backwards to an American book, and it starts this way, and you read it like that. So no, the you, words are still right to left. <laughs> so then you would start here, and you'd read it like this, down like that, instead of the traditional. American comic way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's because in, in Japanese, in Japan, I'm sorry, they still keep the traditional writing where they write down as opposed to across. Usually in manga. What I want to say is like the vampires in this world, uh, which gets revealed later on in the chapters, the thing is that there's actually different types of vampires. Mm -hmm. The thing is, there's the Red Moon vampires, which are seen as kind of like the more traditional violent vampires that we've kind of come to know. And then there's the Blue Moon Vampires, which is like Vanitas and, uh, I guess I could say no way, but I, I don't really know. Misha, uh, right? I don't remember his name. Yeah. Uh, Louis eventually, when he, yeah, he's, 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 when he became Curse Bearer. No, we, yeah. mean, we mean the, the Blue Moon. The, yeah. um, the one with yeah. the blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the thing Louis, is that... Louis has gold eyes. Yeah, so the way how the vampires are determined is the thing is that the, the Blue Moon Vampires have blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Which I guess is an easy indication to tell who they are. So the things I, ca I thought that was kind of interesting. The thing is that there's like two different types of vampires. One is more violent. One is less violent. All right. And the thing is, I thought that was an interesting dynamic that there was a different types of vampires mm -hmm. in this world. And the thing is, they both hate each other. I'm glad that you know Noah doesn't <laughs> hate Vani Taz or, or vice versa. Yeah. I find it interesting that um, a lot of the chasseurs think that it's interesting how a vampire and a human such as Vani Tassinoi can get along as well as they do and let alone be friends because mm. they've just never seen or heard of vampire and human being able to do that when they see them laughing and fighting alongside one another as like a well-oiled machine they're like what is happening and Roland is just fascinated by it mm. and I find that interesting too yeah so I, I kind of thought that was kind of interesting that there's two different clans of vampires 
I kind of like that dynamic. I just wish the things that there was more blue moon vampires because we mostly see red moon instead of uh, the blue moon. Well, maybe we will. I think I, yeah. I agree. I, mean, I know like, there's a few that we know of. But yeah, like, I, I agree with that. I think that having different kinds, I think that that adds a different, di uh, uh, an additional dimension to yeah. we think we're somewhat familiar with. Yeah, and I, that we think all vampires are the same. Humans are different. Now, different species of animals are different. Yeah. It's not, why not with vampires? Yeah, vampires, like, you can... example, sharks. There's some sharks, like, great whites aren't really all that aggressive. Unless you make them mad, and they kind of do. But then there's those just sharks who will right out attack you just because the thing is, you're near them. They don't yeah. want you there. So the thing is, like, that's the kind of different thing is that, you know, but everyone always loves the same sharks as mm -hmm. being violent. The, the whale shark is very docile. Which kind of shark are you referring to as being violent? Almost, it's like something with the sea. It's like Carmanian vet. Uh, shark or something like that. It's 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 a very violent shark. The thing is that they basically have a lot of birth. It's so violent that when they're first born, the first born one just eats all the other eggs of its siblings before eating its way out of its mother. The moment they see you, they will come and attack you. They don't care if you're on the food chain. They'll come at you. That's like Pac-Man having compulsive eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, trust me, I would not want to be near that shark. Either. Anything else? Uh, do you want to bring anything else up, Dominica? Oh, I'm not sure. That might have covered all of it. Do we have any final thoughts, then? Uh, read it. I like it a lot. I'm excited to keep going. I prefer reading mm. the physical copy of it rather than online. Sometimes because of translation issues, um, mm. I prefer to read the official release. Um, and I do recommend, like, if you are a Japanese anime watcher only to definitely check out the English version of it because the performances are really amazing. I love how they throw in the French words. It just gives it more authenticity. Mm. Makes it feel like it actually takes place in France, which I feel is very unique. You know, the anime with a different story took me a little bit to get into that, but once I started to read the manga, I was hooked within the first chapter, and that doesn't really happen a lot with me, especially mm. with manga, but the drawing yeah. style is really, really beautiful. With the lighting and all of her official arts, there, it, I don't know how long it takes her to draw these, but it, it looks like it would take her, you know, 20 hours to do each official, you know, drawing, but it probably doesn't. But that's just how good they are, in my opinion. I think that it got better as it progressed. I, I think that it was uh, a bit of a challenge to get into, but mm. as it flowed, and you knew who everybody was and what everybody was like, I feel that it was pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of lot to get used to, a lot of names, a big cast, yeah. um, a kind of a big world, and the dynamic mm -hmm. of how things work and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. You know, mm -hmm. it takes a little bit to get used to, but like, because I've seen a lot of the anime and I've read a bit further on the manga, it was so much easier to follow. When I reread it, you know, a couple of hours ago before this discussion, everything just made so much more sense. So definitely, mm -hmm. it gets easier to understand the more you read it. And mm -hmm. if you have a problem with French names, the thing is don't worry, I had the same problem too. <laughs> I just found out today it was called Vanitas and not uh, Vanitas. Vanitas. I know, everyone, <laughs> everyone said it that way before the official translation came mm -hmm. out. Yeah, so like things, that was, that was, that was kind of like, so Vanitas, not Vanitas. Yes, which is also, as we discussed before we did this, um, a genre of a visual art like a painting style. It's actually really interesting. Um, kind of symbolic when you think of uh, Vanitas himself. So if you don't know what that is, go ahead and look it up. You might learn something cool. All right then, how would we rate this? Zero to five stars, half stars permitted. Dan? Four and a half. I, I like the art style, I like the action. Plus it's got like steampunk and vampires, two things I love. Plus as I mentioned earlier, things that the separate types of vampires and the thing is like the way the story's told. Four and a half. So good, I like it. Um, I'm also gonna go with the four and a half, but the only reason for me why it's not bumped up to a five is because it's not over and there's a lot of unanswered questions that I have. If, you know, one day when it is finished and we, you know, we go over it again, the ending of it will decide for me whether or not mm. it either stays at four and a half, goes down to four, or goes up to a five. Mm. So I oh, that's, have, that's the reason why I yeah, give it a five. There, I can't give it a five yet because it could turn into the classic Japanese trope where, mm. you know, one of the characters kills the other one and but they live happily ever after. Like, oops. Mm. Like, oh, well, time to move on. Like, I don't like that trope. So the ending will decide mm. how I feel about it. Yeah, it could go off a really long like, mm -hmm. one piece. But so far, you know, four and a half, I really like a lot of elements. I like the characterizations. Um, they're very unique, and I am excited to see where our two protagonists and their friendship go. I'm going to go three. Right I'm not, not as much as, uh, I'm not as 
amazed as much as Dan and Dominica. Uh, well, I'm a big anime but fan, so. I think it was a uh, pretty plotty to begin with D's, not T's. <laughs> and I think that it took a while to really begin to meld and get where the uh, get to see where Vin uh, Vanitas and Noe. It took a little bit of time to really. And it did for me too. It uh, did for yeah. me. Warm up to the piece at hand. It started to. Uh, progress uh, toward the end of what I saw as volume one. I still feel that there was, uh, but there's still more that I want. Well, don't worry, I'll pick it again. Within a piece like this. I'll pick the next one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we can go over the next one. And then we all force you to read it. And tell me how many I'm actually supposed to read. I will. Yeah, I should have told them that, but I'll force you to read it. And we'll see how they define volume two. Probably up to that. chapter eight. We'll see. I don't remember. Alrighty. I, I think that, granted, with that, I would think that nine or ten left off on a pretty good... Probably. And both of them left on pretty good cliffhangers. If you want to check out a case study of Vanitas, uh, here is a copy right here. Uh, this includes chapters one to four. We interpreted volume one <laughs> in all different ways. Very loosely. Yes. I, would, I would continue going as far as I did and possibly reading the ones I have not gotten to. Because as of recording this, it is still currently being made. I think there's like chapters are still 57 out. chapters, I believe. Alrighty then, be sure to join us next time on another episode of Three Gladiators for now. Keep reading. Hi there, this is Josh, and on the general discussion series finale of Literary Gladiators, we will be discussing I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. Uh, we will be concluding 14 terrific seasons and 410 amazing discussions. And if you like what you see on this channel, please support us on our Patreon, because we are not going away entirely. You know, we will still be doing casual free-for-all videos, and we will still be releasing individual content. Thank you for your ongoing support for this channel, and be sure to join us for the general discussion series finale. Keep reading.